thought. Whenever you have a thought, your brain releases chemicals. Whenever you have a bad thought, a sad thought, a mad thought, your brain releases a certain set of chemicals that make you feel bad immediately. I wonder how long in our human history is it going to take for us to realize that we are the only things on this planet trying not to be exactly what we are. Um, oftentimes I have trouble coming to do content because my I, I, a lot of the concepts that I have in my head I can't explain well. I don't, I'm not able to explain them well. In my opinion, they sound really jumbled in my head. Um, so, as clearly as I can get this out, we are the only animals on this planet that actively try not to be what we are. All of us are always trying to find something to give us definition. Uh, we have to be parents, we have to be lawyers, doctors, Indian chiefs. We have to work at a certain company, we have to make a certain amount of money. We have to do all these things to give ourselves value. We have to do all these things to give ourselves definition and purpose. Nothing else on this planet does that crazy stuff. There's not another living soul on this planet that does anything but what it's supposed to do. Trees tree. You don't ever see a tree putting things on to make itself look more like a bush or a shrub or you don't see oak trees trying to look like pines you don't you know what i mean like you don't see any of that we are the only things on this planet that actively try all the time to not be what we are because we have found the human condition so abhorrent that it troubles us to be that even though we are constantly reminded of our humanity. We hate things <laughs> like rape and, and murder and things like that. We hate all of that. We call it horrid. We call it deplorable. We call it uh, inhuman. When the truth of the matter is that is everywhere. And the sooner we come to grips with the fact that that is who we are, the easier time we would have on this planet. We are constantly trying to make meaning by having all these claims to knowledge that none of us can know. Uh, which really makes me sad that we have to tell ourselves fairy tales in order to feel good about our time in. The fact that you are here with the astronomical conditions that work against you at any given moment, like the fact that you are still here is should be enough. Right now there are germs and bacteria and viruses actively trying to kill you. Right now, the environment has sun rays and all manner of things that are trying to kill you. There are earthquakes and tsunamis and all sorts of weather patterns that can kill you. We're still here. And that's not enough for us. That is not enough for us. We have to imagine and have control over what it is that happens when we leave, which does nothing but take the time away from the time that we have here. Because we're always looking. <laughs> we're always looking outside of ourselves. We're always looking for something to make us better. We're all make us feel better. Not make us better necessarily, but make us feel better. And the problem is that all that really boils down to is that we don't want to take responsibility for ourselves and our actions. If you take responsibility for yourself and your action, you know that you don't have to make a prayer to do good deeds. You don't have to make a, or, or let me not say it in that way. You don't have to depend on something outside of yourself to give you purpose. You decide what that is for yourself. You decide 
based on what you're good at, where you are in the world, what's happening around you, your environment, the things that are important to the people around you, all those things factor in. And we are constantly trying to make sense of all that. And instead of instead of practicing to just be the best human beings possible, we we have to claim to be the best people after we die too. We have to claim to be the chosen people who will get into the special place after we die in order for us to feel good. I was talking to a friend of mine earlier and I asked, I said, no, I, the, the idea came to me that, you know, we look back in history and we look at things like Salem witch trials, um, uh, the Inquisition, all the dark ages, all that stuff. We we look at all that stuff and we go, oh my gosh, they were so backward, they were so ill-informed. <laughs> and a hundred years from now, people are going to look back at us and go, oh my God, they were so backward, they were so ill-informed. And the problem isn't even that the information isn't available, is that we won't we won't seek it out. We'll take the old information that was given to us, we'll chew it up again and spit it back out to a new generation. And we think that's okay. For all the people who have children, who have who watch in are on social media enough or watch a TikTok video maybe or a thread or a reel or whatever, and you saw the history that somebody put together of the educational system in the United States of America and who funded it, why it was funded, the purpose of funding this particular educational system, and you still send your children to school every day. I, I, <laughs> I don't have kids. It's easy for me to say shit like this, so yeah. I just don't understand. When are we going to be angry enough? At what point are we going to be angry enough that we are willing to set this shit on fire to make sure that the generation behind us does not have to struggle the way we did, does not have to put up with the lies that we did, does not have to put up with false information and ideologies in the same manner that we did? At what point are we angry enough? I went to an event today. It was a um, conference. It was a religious conference, uh, religious religion-based conference. Let me say it in that way. Uh, the, I think it was the Nation of Islam, and there was a fashion show. And I'm watching all these people, and I'm watching the pomp and circumstance of it all, because it's a lot of pomp and circumstance. Everybody has to punctuate everything with Alhamdulillah, Inshallah, Mashallah. Everybody has to do the, the whole, you have to be more Muslim than the next person, or at least as Muslim as the person standing next to you. And, and that was the feel all day. And the other part was there was a great sense of, because it was a fashion show, obviously, there were men who were in attendance, but not many men who had anything to do with the fashion show. So there were women, obviously, running this particular fashion show. And I, I had brought a friend with me to model. And my friend, who is not Muslim, so this was her first time being in this type of atmosphere around this many Muslims. And so, of course, I could be by her side because they separate the men from the women. So she got to find out a whole bunch of stuff outside of her presence. <laughs> and, you know, she was like, you know, every time when the women would go down the walkway, there was, there was this, the coordinating sister, whoever was helping at that moment, would say, you know, uh, tell them, be mindful of, you know, shaking your hips and stuff because there are men present. And she's like, so in her head, she's, she didn't say anything, obviously, you know, but in her head, she's like, so fucking what? The men, it, yeah, she, it, it short circuited her brain real quick. And, you know, 
it does speak to the fact that we allow men in our society men have created their own narrative in such a way that they get excused we get excused for everything all you have to boys will be boys you know how men are and that whole narrative that we keep regurgitating to the point that women are terrified of us. We come out of their bodies and they are terrified of us. They are always looking and, and it's got to be a schizophrenic struggle. It has got to be the most schizophrenic struggle in the world. I don't know how y'all do it. I, mm, li, huh. I, okay, I, this is, I told you I get doubled up because here's the thing. I don't know how at one time you can fear these men at the same time want these men. Why would you want somebody that you fear? I know you're like, not the ones like that. Every woman that I know sends me warnings via social media inbox me there's always some new random warning going around for women watch yourselves in the parking lots they're they're abducting people from the malls make sure you check your back seats and your trunks before you pull off make sure oh there's a new scam they're leaving things on the car door handles because they're trafficking women i Honestly, and I tell my female friends this all the time, I do not know what that is like. To have to live in fear and guard it all the time. So when they send me the things that are cautionary, like watch your purses and you know, the guys, that you, it's always some weird shit. And I'm like, nobody, I, nobody's looking to abduct me. I'm a 50 year old black man in the city of Newark. Like nobody is looking to pick this up and run away with it. Yeah, I don't. So, and the thing that I often wonder as women continue to perpetuate the fear as they pass it from sister to sister going, yeah, I'm looking out for my girls. I'm going to send this to them. How many of you have actually, in the course of your 40 or 50 plus years, witnessed any of the things that you have been warned about time and time again throughout the years? How many times? Even if you've experienced it once, let's say twice. If you've experienced that, that puts it st still statistically below the level where you should be warned about it all the time. The level of stress hormones in you all has got to be out of control. It has got to be out of control. There is no way that you all should be operating under suspicion and fear and anxiety at that level all your lives as adults. You shouldn't. That's where lupus and cancer and all the, because you're constantly leaking these chemicals into your body. Every time something happens, you jump in. Every time something happens, you flinching. Every time somebody moves, you got the, yeah. Every thought that you have corresponds with a chemical in your, that is released in your brain. So when you constantly release chemicals associated with fear, associated with anxiety, associated with frustration, associated with anger, associated with lack, you constantly have those chemicals leaking into your body, guess what happens? It poisons you after a while because your body is not meant to handle those chemicals at that level consistently. It's meant to do it on occasion when something has happened and your body will run through efficiently and do what it needs to do with these chemicals and it'll be dope and you'll make it out alive and da 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 you all are leaking them into your systems every single day you're opening your email to warnings you're opening your email to the the, the oh there's a gang initiation watch it when was the last time you were in you something had a gang initiation happened to you when was the last time you were involved in a gang initiation? We have to stop letting things scare us. That is how all the lies that they use in society begin to work. It's little shit like that. It's so insidious. They teach us to fear everything when we have nothing to fear. 
The thing that we have to fear are the people who are telling us that we should fear someone. That is what we have to fear the most. And we don't see that. And trying to get into those conversations is long and involved. And I wish some of you would actually ask me some direct questions that I could answer, particularly in regards to religion, because we need to deconstruct that shit. It needs to be deconstructed. It needs to be deconstructed. Your need for a God outside of yourself needs to be deconstructed. Your need for an afterlife needs to be deconstructed. Your need for control, because if you think that you're going to control or be able to manipulate in some shape, form, or fashion by virtue of what it is that you are doing right here and right now, what happens once the energy transfers from your body, you need to be deconstructed. You do. Uh, I grew up, like I did, you, if you watch me and you've seen me before, you know I grew up in a very religious family. And it's recently, not recently, but I got the conversation, I got the chance to have a conversation with my oldest cousin in my generation. He came in on a humble from California and stayed a few days. He was here to help his mom. And we were having a conversation and the, the mantra that the generation, my mom and her sisters, their generation, the mantras that they tell themselves to make themselves feel better are crazy. And they're not true. They're not true. But they will tell you that each and every time. They're not lies. But it's not a consistent truth. It's just not something that can happen all the time. So, but they have built this up in their lives. They have built this up in their minds and in their spirits that this is what happened and this is how it was. And I have decided that I am not going to tell myself any lies anymore. It just doesn't serve me. And that is the questions that we need to ask ourselves as opposed to getting caught up in other people's ideas about what right and wrong are. You should be concerned about what your what's preferable to you, what serves you, and what doesn't serve you. We have too many edicts where we're trying to take a real big, you know, brush and paint this entire canvas with this brush. And it doesn't work like that with people. Every individual bristle on that brush needs to be attended to. And each one needs to meet that canvas on its own. And each one is going to leave a slightly different streak. It's going to make a slightly different path with the paint as it traverses the canvas. We have to stop painting society with this broad brush. That is why right now women cannot have abortions in certain states. That is why they are trying to roll back civil rights, everything. That is why they have used the 13th Amendment, I think it is, 14th Amendment. That's the voting amendment, right? Yeah. How they use that to keep us occupied. We still trust them way too much. We trust them more than we trust ourselves. And that has got to change. Um, I don't know. I always say every video, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't. I don't know what it'll take to change this. I don't know what it'll take to have a better situation. I know we just can't continue to believe people and we can't continue to act like we believe what they're saying. We can't continue to act like the Kool-Aid that they're serving us that we're going to drink it. We can't continue to act, we can't continue to drink it. We can't continue to act like we're going to drink it and we need to throw it back in their faces. So I'm waiting for everybody to get as a uh, as upset as I am. I'm waiting for people to, you know, start flipping tables. I'm waiting for people to stop, you know, patronizing certain systems in the society. I, I don't think we need leadership. I just think we need organization. 
insofar as people of color, I just think we need some organization. Um, we are the, the people that, and, and, and it's, this is what kills me, is that there are, you'd be hard pressed to find a black person in our society who doesn't know the ills, the wrongs. They may not know all of the historical events that happened, but they know the oppression. They're very familiar with it. And the fact that it doesn't register to white people is impossible, first of all, because there is a contingent of people I don't I don't like calling them white people without mel melanin people with less melanin we're going to call them the lessers so no that's not nice people with less melanin yeah that I don't want to call them less I'm, I'm not trying to be derogatory but people with less melanin know there's so many people you see all the time. So if those people know, and we know, they know what they do. And we treat them like we have to tell them. We teach, we treat them like we need to teach them. We need to teach them shit. That's for them to learn. What we need to do is learn about us. Fuck them. Smooth like that. Fuck them. Fuck them. Fuck their history. Fuck their religion. Fuck their God. Fuck their mothers. Fuck their fathers. We have to stop believing these people. I don't know what it will take for us to be. And you know, I watch a lot of movies. I, I'm, a, I'm a movie buff. And yes, I do realize that the government uses movies for propaganda. I do. I also realize that there are a whole bunch of people who write, who know things that we don't know who can say it in a way without saying it. And oftentimes we think of it as entertainment. All that aside, there's a part in one of my favorite, it's not even, it's more than a trilogy now, they put a part four to The Matrix. I know. But the part where Morpheus is talking and he's explaining about the people in the matrix and how so many of them are so hopelessly inert that they will risk their lives they will die to protect the system and every time i'm outside that's what i feel like that's not just what i feel like that's who i run into the people who will die to protect this system that oppresses them it's very interesting I'm learning not to take life so hard. And by that, I mean so seriously. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Everything that happens to me happens for my highest good, the highest possible good, the highest of the highest good. And I know that because as I review my life, there hasn't been one thing that I have asked for that has not shown up. Can't wait to see what shows up next. I would really like for this to be more, more conversational. So if you have questions, comments, anything that you want me to talk about, expound on, or talk about me with, talk with me about, yeah, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to like this video. So thank you so much. I'm Uncle D. Griot style, we out here. So.